Yali Madat a todos e sejam bem-vindos a mais um Soul Full Time. Hoje tivemos o privilégio de iniciar este programa com a apresentação das irmãs Taíra e Inaya. Eu adorei a escolha da música, a dança e já me sinto no espírito navroso que, por sinal, é já na próxima semana. Iremos agora assistir a um momento de reflexão com o Dr. Karim Gulam Ali, que nos irá falar sobre o tema Olhar para os problemas de hoje como oportunidades para o futuro. Vamos ouvi-lo? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, members of the Jamaat, Yali Madad. Thank you for joining us today. I'm going to speak with the Jamaat on the topic looking through today's problems to tomorrow's opportunities. And let me start by talking about why I chose this title and share with you an interesting story. In 1991, Molana Hazriman came to Pakistan for 17 days. On the 16th of November, Molana Hazriman attended the fourth convocation of the AKU and spoke with the new graduates. In his speech, a one-liner of many stood out very distinctly, full of insight and historical significance, and I believe a hallmark of Ismaili history, which then makes the title of our talk. Molana Hazrimam said, quote, we must look through today's problems to tomorrow's opportunities. Thus, the very title of my presentation will be the foundation of this talk. And through a couple of inspiring stories, I will build the edifice with three key pillars or lessons, which will be the takeaways of this brief talk. Now, let me speak on the foundational statement first. Right from the time of revelation and throughout our history, with all the challenges that came, we have always been guided to look at problems straight in their faces and deal with them as positively and faithfully as possible and seize the opportunities that lie hidden in these challenges. And this is because our Imams have always guided us to seek inspiration and face challenges head on. In the words of Iqbal, Tundiye baade mukhalif se na gabra e ukhab. Ye to chalti hai tujhe ucha urani ke liye. Don't fear the intense violent opposing wind, O oh eagle. It is only blowing against you, so may you fly even higher. And that has been, I believe, our historical hallmark. I want to share with you two inspiring stories from our history and show you how we saw through the challenges of that time to the future opportunities. I will draw three lessons from the first story, same three lessons from the second story, And then we will try to apply these three lessons to our situation today. And I would also like to invite the Jamaat to draw their own conclusions. Our situations are very different from each other. And thinking about these things, personal reflection, tafakur in the words of the Quran is central to the building of faith. Let me take you to the time of the Prophet, 7th century. The Prophet receives the revelation, Iqra bi ismi rabbika lazi khalaq. And then after a short hiatus, he is asked by Allah, Qum fa'anzir, rise and warn. It is then that the Prophet takes Allah's message of monotheism, of one community or ummah, and social justice. And when he does that, he comes face to face with the harsh realities of the opposition to him and to his teachings. The leaders of Quraysh began to worry about the future of their livelihoods and also about their status in Mecca. 
the earliest biographers, such as Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Hisham, and Tabari, writing about Prophet Muhammad and his followers, describe how they began to face persecution by the Makkans. On several occasions, the Prophet is insulted. When he comes to worship to Kaaba, people are not happy with him. Some of the early converts were attacked and dragged along the street by their beards. The Quraysh had several of the early converts as their captives. When all this did not work, the leaders of Quraysh came together and decided to boycott the Prophet, his clan, and all his followers. They hung a document on Kaaba, no one shall buy or sell to anyone from Prophet's clan or his followers, and would not allow anyone to marry into them. Some would heckle the Prophet in public sermons, telling the crowd not to follow this man or pay any attention to him. Some tossed thorns and sharp branches in front of Prophet Muhammad when he passed by. And some actually plotted against the Prophet's life. Now, members of the Jamaat, the persecution in Mecca continued for 10 years, which ended with migration of Muslims to Medina. The migration or Hijra, therefore, becomes a turning point, a milestone for the early Muslims. It gave them the freedom from the boycott, from the oppression, and from continuous fear. It resulted into what Mawlana Sultan Muhammad Shah alayhi salam wrote in his memoirs, and I quote, a rapid and brilliant new flowering of humanity's capacity and desire for adventure and discovery in the realms of both spirit and intellect. That flowering, Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah said, began in Arabia. Its origin and impetus were given to it by my holy ancestor, the Prophet Muhammad, and we know it by the name of Islam." Unquote. Now, the question I would pose to the Jamaat is, what do we think were the key ideals that Muslims of Prophet's time imbibed, practiced, that gave them the possibility to bear the pain of their circumstances and come out of it as a successful Muslim community? In other words, what made them resilient? Today, when we are facing our own problems, is there anything for us to learn from there? And I would submit, apart from many lessons could be learned, I would talk about three today. The Prophet's mission created a profound sense of community, which is the ideal of Ummah. This created a sense of identity a deep sense of identity and belonging amongst earliest uh, converts to Islam. Let me plant a seed here. The first thing that the Prophet did in Medina was to create a space where people can come and congregate. Secondly, the Prophet preached monotheism as opposed to poly polytheism, which was the order of the day in Mecca for many. The Prophet preached Kulhu Wallahu Ahad. The practice of faith, the sense of belonging to the divine, Inna Lillahi, we belong to Allah, we are of Allah, sets the foundation which was unwavering and it became central to the new Muslim community providing confidence, courage, and strength from their practices, whatever practices they were doing at that particular time in history. Thirdly, the Muslim community during the time of the Prophet followed the Prophet's guidance in its letter and spirit. They understood the vision of the Prophet. They knew 
that the Prophet's hand is guided by Allah. They internalized this vision and they worked hard towards following the Prophet's guidance. Now, there is a lot for us to learn from these three important points, and we will return to these three lessons, these three pillars of our foundation after our second story. Now, from the seventh century, let me fast forward you to the 20th century. On the 4th of August, 1972, the president of Uganda, Idi Amin, declared a dream that instructed him to expel 80,000 Asians from Uganda. And that too, within 90 days. Now, this was a terrible time for many who had made Uganda their permanent home, including about 12,000 Ismailis. People lost everything they had worked for, their homes, their properties, their livelihood, their businesses, all this was lost overnight. Now, through various means and with the help of United Nations, people got resettled in many parts of the world, including in Britain, in Italy, Scandinavian countries, in Canada, to rebuild their lives again. And let me give you one instance from Canada because I have studied the Canadian story. Canada is a big country and some 6,200 people came from Uganda uh, to Canada. They were scattered from east to west in all small cities, in big cities. Interestingly, the first thing people did in Canada, everywhere, was to find a place to meet. In Vancouver, it was in Burnaby, in a place uh, in, on a street called Edmonds. In Toronto, it was on Eglinton. It is these places of meeting and congregation that people found belonging to the community. Remember the Prophet first created a place to congregate in Medina. Many of the Ugandans knew each other, many of them did not. But they had a common bond of community. They were all children of the Imam of the time. They found solace through faith. And in addition, they found homes to rent, jobs to go to, know how to live in Canada, in these places of meeting. In the winter months with snow and sub-zero temperatures, the Jamaat found warmth and hope in the spirit of community. So there was a spirit of community, resilience of faith, and the grace of the leadership of the Imam, which made them rebuild their lives again. The Jamaats were able to look through their problems to the future opportunities. They did not give up because their hopes were tied with the ideal of their history and their faith. Today, we talk about Uganda somewhat differently. And let me play a small clip from the opening of the Aga Khan Park in Canada. And what happened in, in Uganda with Idi Amin, you all know, I don't need to uh, remind you of that. In Canada, province of Ontario opened their arms and you said please come to Canada and there's a joke which I may repeat to you of a Canadian who goes into an Ismaili home and sees a big picture of Idi Amin on the wall well what's that why is he there and the answer from the Ismaili family is, every day we thank him for throwing us into Canada. <laughs> you see, we were able to make lemonade out of lemons when they were served to us. 
Now let us come to the present challenges that we are facing and see how we can learn from our history and if we can apply some of the learnings from our history to the present situation. We were confronted with an invisible virus. If the lessons of history are true, we might be able to apply some of these lessons to make our foundational statement to look through today's problems to tomorrow's opportunities a reality. First, we are living through unprecedented times. As a Jamaat, let us stay connected with the community life so that loneliness, seclusion does not get to us physically or mentally. That means connecting with Jamaati programs online, keeping in touch with our families and friends, making new friends. Also to look for people whom we can serve. In this time, when we cannot congregate physically, we need to phone people, help people, talk with them, serve in Jamaati institutions, contribute our time, our, in, our intellect, our resources for the Jamaat. Giving is the best way to gaining in life. All the time, much more at this particular time in our history. Secondly, as we see the light at the end of the tunnel with the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines coming out, our struggles are not yet over. It will still take some time and complacency is not advised. We want to protect every member of the Jamaat. Masks, hand washing, social distancing, the Imam has reminded us in his recent message, they are all required. Just as people worked hard after losing everything in Uganda or in Mecca or at other times in history, as I said, this particular principle that we are talking about has been part of our history throughout 1400 years. As people did that during the course of history, we need to make sure that we work hard, we follow the guidance of the Imam of the time and his institutions. I want to recommend to the Jamaat that every single morning we read through at least one of the recent messages that have come from Maulana Hazar Imam since this pandemic started. They are at our fingertips. And in the morning, to get inspired by the blessings and the words of the Imam would set us up well for the rest of the day. Thirdly, we need to remain connected with our own personal individual practices of faith. We know what our obligations are. So to start the day with a few minutes of meditative prayer, maybe an hour or other prayers sets us right to encounter the day. Let us carry our faith with us at all times. The message from the Imam on the role of faith is very clear. Let me show you a small clip from a PBS interview that Maulana Hazri Imam Salvatullah Alayhi gave at the Ismaili Center Toronto in 2014. How much are you guided by your faith? Is your faith everything? Yes. I wouldn't be guided by anything else. <laughs> I wouldn't understand that. So every minute of your day you're guided by your faith? Well, the faith has 1,400 years of tradition. It has been exposed to so many different situations that there's practically no human situation unknown to it, although science is changing things today. So let us get inspired by the light of our faith every single day. In conclusion, today we have discussed the foundational ideal to always look for opportunities through all our trials and tribulations. And the sources we discussed to achieve them 
are our commitment to our community life, to our practice of faith, and following the guidance of Maulana Hazir Imam, which will, inshallah, make us resilient and strong going forward. Thank you very much, and Ya Ali Madad. Tal como tivemos a oportunidade de ouvir, é importante que encaremos os desafios que aparecem na nossa vida com esperança e coragem. Devemos agarrar-nos ao sentimento de comunidade, praticar a nossa fé e seguir as orientações de Molana Hazarimam. Ao lutarmos e enfrentarmos os problemas, novas e melhores oportunidades surgirão no futuro. E por falar em futuro, na próxima semana celebraremos o Navroso e estamos a preparar muitas surpresas. Teremos a Festa Virtual do Talim, uma sinergia entre o ITREB e o Elderly Care, música, programas de entretenimento e ainda muitas outras surpresas preparadas especialmente para o Jamat. Durante a próxima semana, fiquem atentos ao canal do WhatsApp do National Council e às redes sociais da Smiley Portugal para se prepararem para a celebração do Navroso. Vamos então à agenda da próxima semana? Amanhã... Os nossos seniors terão um programa especial de My Golden Events que será dedicado ao tópico Plano de Vacinação e a sua Eficácia. Para todas as crianças e jovens, amanhã irão decorrer as habituais aulas de Talim. Para todo o Jamat, teremos as aulas de Pilates no domingo, as aulas de ginástica na terça, a aula Explore na quarta e a aula de Yoga na quinta. Para os nossos seniors, continuaremos com as atividades semanais as aulas de informática aos sábados e terças, o programa Memória Ativa às segundas, as aulas de ginástica às terças, quartas e sextas, as aulas de inglês às quartas e sextas e o programa My Golden Events às quintas. Para encontrar mais informações sobre as atividades semanais, consulta a newsletter desta semana. Relembramos ainda que caso pertença a um grupo de risco e necessite de algum apoio para compras de supermercado e ou de farmácia, entre em contato com o National Council através do e-mail nationalcouncil.com.pt E para terminar, aposto que já sabem de cor o que vou dizer. Devem utilizar a máscara corretamente, desinfetar as mãos regularmente e manter o distanciamento físico. Encontramos-nos na próxima semana para mais um Soul Full Time e até lá, fiquem em casa, fiquem em segurança e ali madate. Thank you.